I want to share with you guys how to measure where to cut in your heel. So you will first have to take your full foot length. You will measure from the ball of your heel all the way to your largest toe. So my measurement is nine inches. You're then going to take your toe, which will be um, approximately 1.75 inches long, and your heel is about 1.75 inches. So this is from where we've cast on to completing our toe is approximately in those length. So you are then going to take your full foot measurement minus your heel and minus your toe will give you 5.5 inches for my sock. Now let me show you on a real pair of socks what this looks like. For this pair, I, just, I knit them cuffed down, but then I cut in my heel. So I knit these completely cuffed down, and then I cut in the heel where I wanted them to be. So if I measure after starting the toe, all the way up from your last increases where you're really starting your pattern, you're gonna start to measure there, 5.5 inches brought me to this mark right here. This is where you would be putting your stitch marker to mark where you would be cutting in your heel. And then you can continue to knit however long you want that leg to be. Once you have this mark, if you love knitting shorty socks, well then you'll knit another two to three inches however long. I knew that I wanted you know, a good five, five and a half inches as well from the cuff. So I continued knitting on till that length. However long you want to knit is up to you. I know that I will be knitting 5.5 inches for my foot. And my husband, my husband's foot measurement is 10. So for his pair of socks, for an example, we'll do the 10 inches minus 1.75 minus 1.75 for his pair of socks, I knit to 6.5 inches before putting in the heel. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Um, it really just is you measure from the stop of your toe all the way to your foot length. I found that this measurement really works and um, is perfectly fitting for me and my husband as well. So I'm going to meet you back here once we are ready to do our ribbing for the cuff. Now that we've knit our two, we are ready to do our heel and we are also ready to start the ribbing. Now you'll see that I will be cutting in my heel before I do my ribbing. I just want to show you guys where to measure, how to cut, how to do the heel, um, and I will just go and do the ribbing after. Because I am using a contrast color for the heel, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be cutting my main color of yarn. I will be picking up these stitches here um for the heel now when we went into the last video i shared with you guys how to calculate how many inches to place your heel we had calculated for my husband it was 6.5 inches now let me show you how this works i want to point out that right here you see a little dent so i had a little fun with nine inch circular needles i tried them out I still don't like them, but I wanted to try them out. I also noticed my gauge was a little loose, so I went down to 60 stitches here. Um, it won't make a big difference. I did not want to rip back out. It might, it won't bother my husband. He tried them on and he said it fits fine, but I really like a, a tighter gauge. So how you measure is you will start measuring where your increase is stopped. Um, I had calculated with you guys that it's about 1.75 inches for your toe and you can see right here it's about 1.75 to 2 inches. We start measuring from the stop of your increases. So if I go right here you see it's 6.5 inches which means that we are going to be cutting in right here and placing our heel. You'll notice I also placed two stitch markers to where my heel is supposed to be. This helps me make sure that I pick up the right row as well as the right amount of stitches. You will always be picking up half the amount of stitches that you would normally have for your circumference. So if you have 64 stitches on your needle, you would be picking up 32, 60 stitches, 30, and so on and so forth because you are only working half of the needles. What we're going to also do is we're going to pick up the row above and we are also going to pick up the row 
below. Now do not worry, I will hold your hand through this whole process and we're gonna go through it together. A few tips and tricks to make sure that um, you can get the right fit. So for a afterthought heel, it can be a little fiddly the first few times. Um, the first time I did it, I know that I wanted more of the um, room around the heel. If you notice the top of your foot can get a little tight where your heel would be in the back, I would highly recommend adding a few plain rows before you start the decreasing for your heel. I recommend anywhere between three to five plain knit rounds before starting the decreases, and we'll get through that. Um, for me, I like three, and I usually do five plain for my husband. You will definitely find a recipe that works for you. If you try an afterthought heel and it doesn't fit well, um, definitely take note of that. Try adding a few more rows if it, you find it's tight. Also, what you can change is, um, where you are decreasing to. If you find this is too wide, you can decrease to more um, more stitches. So you can play around and find the perfect recipe for you. Like I mentioned, for me, I like three plain knit rounds, and for my husband, it's five. So what you'll need for this, you will need another pair of circular needles or the one that you already have. Uh, I use a tapestry needle to pick out the yarn, as well as I know it's going to be scary, but you need a pair of scissors. Now let's dive right in. I'm going to try and zoom in here, hopefully. There we go. You see this a lot clearer. You are going to be picking up, I know the purple row is going to be a little hard to see, but I know thankfully <laughs> we have this pink row. You're going to pick it up, we're going to start with the bottom, all the right legs of a stitch. So when you see a stitch, you see it's, it's a little V you're going to be picking up these right legs. Let, let me share with you. These right legs. So you see it's a little V. You're going to be picking up every right leg. So, so as you bring it up, um, you want to pick up, like I mentioned, all these right legs. So you're just going to pick it up and we are going to go all the way on our row. You also want to make sure that you're not um, picking up, like you want to keep in the same row. That's why I love doing it right before color change, because uh, you really know that you're in the same row if you have one little row above it. So we're just going to keep picking up all of those stitches, little right legs. There we go. Now we should have 30 stitches on our needles. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now that we've done one, we are going to go and pick up this pink row right above. You don't want to pick up this exact purple row. You want to pick up one before and we are going to do the exact same thing as we are going to pick up all of those right legs. So I just like to pull my needle where it's about there and I'm just using the cords. I find it's a little easier to handle. Um, so we are gonna be picking the exact same stitches but on the row above it. So I just like to tug my, um, my work, make sure. So we're picking up this. You see this purple one? That's where we're gonna start. So we are going to be picking up every single right stitch. all the way across. Okay. 
Okay. So you see that we have one row in between these two picked up stitches. This is the row that you are gonna cut your yarn. I know it can be scary, but don't be scared at all. Now what you're gonna do is you're only actually gonna cut one stitch. So what I like to do is go in with my tapestry needle around the middle, doesn't have to be perfect or precise, and you wanna just pick up one stitch. You wanna make sure you know you actually only picked up a stitch, you didn't pick up anything else, you just picked up that stitch. Preferably you wanna pick up that little right leg. And I like to tug it up, and all I do, you guys, is take that little stitch, do you see it lifted up? I take my scissors, okay, and I just cut. I don't cut anything else, I don't touch anything else. Now what I'm gonna do with my tapestry needle is I'm just gonna go and I tug on the strands of yarn. So you wanna take it and just tug on that little strands of yarn and you're gonna see that it's gonna unravel. Now you don't wanna to pull too much on the other stitches. Um, you just wanna take that and pull that yarn through. Now what I do recommend is that you don't go to the end completely, that you stop the two stitches before the end. This will help you with any gaps that could be in the way. Um, again, this is something that you could change. You could go to one stitch or even three stitches. Um, I prefer two stitches. That's just how I work and I like the fit of it. I don't find that there's any issues with gaps. Also, when you cut in the middle with your yarn, it's gonna help if you have to weave in any ends later. So you see I'm three stitches, so I'm just gonna do one more. There we go, you guys. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go off to the other side and do the exact same thing. So you're just gonna take and you're just gonna pull that yarn through to every single stitch. Don't try to do multiple stitches at once, just try to do one little stitch. That purple is so hard to see. <laughs> there we go. You just want to do one by one. We're gonna do the exact same thing. You just wanna to go to two stitches before the end um, on both sides and you see that that will give you some nice waist yarn to um, weave in the ends later. I absolutely love when you get to cut in between two colors. It helps so much because you're able to really see um, what row the yarn is on I'm gonna pull on this one and that's it. So I have these two stitches. Do I have two or three? Oh, I can do one more. So we'll do one more right here. There we go. Now our sock is wide open, you guys. Wide open. So here is where I was mentioning your plain rows. A afterthought heel is the exact same thing as your toe. Um, all you're doing is you're doing it around the heel. Now, you can go right ahead into the decreases or you can knit some plain rounds. Now, this is where I mentioned it will help your tension in the front of your sock when you're doing um, these plain rounds on the back. So we're just gonna take our needles and I'll show you how we get started in attaching our yarn. Take your, way, um, your contrast color or whichever yarn you're gonna be using and we are going to attach it. You, again, you wanna leave a little bit of a tail whenever you're adding another color. This helps for you to weave in any ends later. Okay, the first two stitches are gonna be very tight because you didn't unravel them and that is okay. If you see any stitches are ever twisted, you can just knit in the back of them and they will untwist on the next round. 
So again, leaving a tail, we're just gonna go in and we're going to knit. Take our yarn and we are gonna be knitting across. So these are for my husband, which means that I will be doing five plain knit rounds before starting the decreases. I'm sorry if the needles are scratching a little bit for you guys. Turn your work. Pull the needle through. Now when you see these tails, you just put them in, in your sock, and those will be so useful later to weave in any, um, any gap that could be shown in your heel. So just gonna continue knitting across. So we just worked our first round all the way across. Um, just gonna pull the needle through here. As always, you may notice that this is a little loose because you attached a new yarn. Um, all I do is I sometimes tug on the next row and I put these little tails in. You definitely wanna put them in because um, you will be closing this and grafting this together. So you don't want those tails out. You definitely wanna put them in your sock. Now we are just gonna be continue knitting around and around for however many plain knit rounds before your decreases. I will be doing five full rounds and I'll meet you back here and we are gonna start decreasing for our heel. Now that you've finished your setup rounds, we're gonna go in and work the heel. Now when I mentioned that it's gonna be the same thing as the toe, the decreases here are gonna resemble exactly the same thing as your toe. So we did this toe up, which means that we increased. Um, you notice that we did one round of increase, one round of knit, increase and knit. We're gonna do that exact same pattern here, but instead of increasing, we are going to be decreasing. So we're first gonna start with a knit one. Then we're gonna do a slip, slip, knit. So we knit them together. And we're gonna knit to three stitches before the end. So we're just gonna knit all of these stitches. So now that we're at the three stitches before the end, we're gonna knit these two together and then knit one. To knit together, you just pass them in together and you knit. So this decreases. Knit one and we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We are going to knit one 
we're going to slip, slip, and you always slip purlwise, and then we're gonna knit these two together. Oh, got a little bit of a, there we go. We're gonna knit to the three stitches before the end, then we'll knit two together and knit one. Read the three stitches. We're gonna knit these two together. Pass them together. Knit, knit one. For the next row, we are going to knit all of the stitches. So this is exactly what we're gonna be doing until we've reached 12 stitches for the size that I'm knitting on each needle. Depending on what your pattern says, um, I am need, knitting the medium size, so I'm gonna be going to 12 stitches on each needle for a total of 24. Now, if this sounds familiar, we cast on 24 stitches, so it's gonna be the exact same um, kind of length here as your heel. So I'm gonna meet you back here once we've finished all of these decreases, follow the pattern, and knit to as many decreases as you need to, and I'll show you how to finish kitchenering your heel. Now that you've done all your decreases for your toe, it will look like this. All your decreases are leaning towards the center, and you have 12 stitches on each side, or the number that your pattern says. To close up this gap, we are gonna be doing the kitchener stitch. To do this, you will be needing a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. You wanna be leaving yourself a tail, um, I would say between six to eight inches. And you're going to be using your tapestry needle. Just put it in. And this is how I like doing the Kitchener stitch. You knit one off, you purl one on. You go to the back needle, you purl one off and knit one on. So this is how it looks. You're gonna take the first stitch, you're gonna knit it off, completely off of your needle. Pass your yarn through. It is gonna be loose, don't worry. Once you come into the second stitch on your bottom needle, you're gonna purl it on. You're gonna go to your back needle. You're gonna purl it off. Then you're gonna go to the back needle, knit one on, making sure you're not twisting any yarn. Go back to the front, we're gonna knit one off, purl on. Knit, uh, purl one off, almost messed up there, and knit one on. Keep going, knit off, and purl on. You're just gonna continue doing this all the way down the needle until there's no stitches left. If you also notice, I'm always tugging because I want to make sure that I'm closing up that gap really nicely. So purl, purl off, knit on. Oh, knit off, purl on. I was just making sure I had the same amount of stitches. Knit off, purl 
on. And you see this is really closing up nicely here. So now that you're at those last two stitches, I wanted to show you, it can get a little fiddly. Um, just make sure you're holding onto your needles. Uh, they are sometimes gonna wanna slip off. So just make sure you're really holding onto those stitches. So you're always gonna knit off, purl on, purl that one off. Here is where I mean it can get fiddly. And then you're gonna knit that one on without them hopping off the needles. So now that you're at your last two stitches, you're just gonna knit this one off, and then you're gonna purl that one off. And there it is. So you see it closed up really nice. There's no gaps, there's no holes, nothing. It's really nice, even in these um, corners here, there's no real no real holes or gaps and that really helps with those um, last stitches. Now here you see that there's a little bit because that's where our working yarn started and that is where also that we have our tail so we can definitely pull that in and weave that in at the end. What we're going to be doing with this tail, you still have it on your tapestry needle. All I like to do is I go in the bottom stitch anywhere in there. Always make sure by the way it's inside um, your sock and not through it and I just pull in this needle with that yarn. And then I tug, make it all nice, and that's it. So this is how your heel looks. From this side you don't see anything, and then from this side you see how I mean that it's exactly like the toe, exactly like those decreases.